Hello, this is Sister Charlene Winston coming to you today with Thursday's Daily Bible Study coming from Charlene's Outreach Ministries. We want to thank each of you for joining with us as we gather together to study and meditate on the Word of the Lord. Amen. Our lesson for today is des desecration of holy vessels. Desecration of holy vessels coming from Daniel 5 <clears throat> verses 1 through 4 and 23 through 30. Amen. This is a great and wonderful lesson as we continue uh, getting ready, uh, moving toward the Sunday's lesson is something that enhances our Sunday's lesson to make give you more information on things that pertain to uh, Samson and his situation and what what uh, we do and do not do and how we act and react to different things. And so this desecration of holy vessels, as uh, Samson desecrated himself uh, by allowing and sleeping with the Philistine, it brought him harm and death. Uh, we are going to look at this uh, lesson on uh, from Daniel. All right, uh, we, but before we get started, I want to ask each of you, if something is said <clears throat> touches your heart, soul, or spirit, and you have any questions or comments, please feel free to jot them at the bottom of the screen below, and I will get to them as soon as possible. And I would also like to say that if you need prayer for anything, please feel free to uh, jot them at the bottom of the screen below and I will get to them and add you to the prayer list that I have. I, I know we know that God is a prayer answering God. Amen. And so as I get up in the morning and, and do my early morning prayer, you will be added to the list <clears throat> and you will be prayed for. Amen. Uh, we want to also ask if you would, if something is said touches your heart, soul, or spirit, or, or you uh, 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 feel that it would be a benefit to you to uh, study with us, to meditate on the Word with us, please subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell to be notified each time we put out a new lesson. Amen. And you will... Uh, benefit in some if you are a child of God listening to these lessons even if you don't have the opportunity to study and meditate in the word like you would like to listening to the word is that if we are to hear the word of God and as we hear the word of God amen that it embeds in our spirit and the Holy Spirit has more to work with when we come upon situations that we need help amen we and we get be open our mouth and the Lord, uh, the Holy Spirit speaks through us. Amen. We're we going to get ready and get started. But of course, first we're going to have prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you because you are wonderful. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because you are our counselor. You counsel us and lead us and guide us through to all truth. Lord, we thank you that the Holy Spirit resides in us and unction us to do the right thing, to, to speak the right words and not to go forward in things that we shouldn't do. Well, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are God Almighty, all knowing, all seeing in the name of Jesus. We give you the glory and the honor. We thank you that you are our everlasting Father. We thank you that I, you are our Prince of Peace, Father. We thank you for all that you do, all that you have done, and all that you shall do in each of our lives. Guide us and lead us to your true path of righteousness. Father, we give you the glory and the honor, and we bless your holy name. Father, we thank you for, do, for being our guide for being our leader. Lord, you are our light and our shining armor, and whom shall we fear? Lord, <clears throat> we ask you and thank you this day, Heavenly Father, that you open our eyes that we see and our ears that we hear. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from on high that we gain as we study and meditate on your word, that more and more is put into our bank of knowledge and understanding of your word, Father, that we can be more proficient in our doing the word, have a better understanding how to open our mouth and to speak your word. Lord, we give you the glory and the honor and we bless your holy name. Dear God in heaven, we do thank you, Lord Jesus, and we ask you that you continue to show us the way in Jesus' name. Lord, let the word 
words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in thy sight, O oh God, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, we're going to get ready and dive right into the lesson, Desecration of Holy Vessels. This is a wonderful lesson. It's, I mean, all of them is wonderful to me. I enjoy studying and reading the Word and getting more and more out of the Word and growing in, in the Lord. Amen. The scripture lesson text reading, starting at the first through the fourth verse, it said, King Belshazzar made a great feast for a thousand of his lords and drank wine in front of the thousand. Belshazzar, when he tasted the wine, commanded that the vessels of gold and silver that Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken out of the temple in Jerusalem, he be brought that the kings and his lords and his wives and his concubines might drink from them. Then they brought in the golden vessels that that had been taken out of the temple, the house of God in Jerusalem. And the king and his lords, his wives and his concubines drank from them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver and bronze and iron and wood and stone. Verse 23 through 30 says, But you have lifted up yourself against the Lord of heaven and the vessels of his house have been brought in before you and you and your lords and your wives and your concubines have drunk wine from them and you have praised the gods of silver and gold of bronze and iron and wood and stone which do not see or hear or know but the God in whose hand is your breath and whose are all your ways you have not honored then from his presence the hand was sent, and his writing was inscribed. And this is the writing that was inscribed. Mina, Mina, Tekel, and Persan. I pray that I'm pronouncing those correctly. It said, this is the interpretation of the matter. The main thing is to understand what it means. God has numbered the days of your kingdom and brought it to an end. To kill, you have been weighed in the balance and found wanting. Perez, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then Belshazzar gave the command, and Daniel was clothed with purple. A chain of gold was put around his neck, and a proclamation was made about him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. That very night, Belshazzar, the Chaldean king, was killed. Amen, amen. This is a powerful and wonderful lesson. You know, we see here that uh, <clears throat> we can do and go so far, and God get does get tired. Amen. They said we have a, a God that's patient and long waiting, but we can go too far. We can go too far. Amen. And as we see here, not only was they given worship to gods of gold, silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone, as we do today, amen, as we give glory to the uh, to the house, we have to spend more time on, on decorating and fixing the house than we have time for God. We have uh, our cars, our money, our uh, uh, different uh uh, items of our home, or our home can be of wood or stone or, uh, or whatever we use and put before God. But he gets tired. Time wears out. Uh, as the word uh, speaks of frequently, the cup is filled to overflowing. And when that happens, we have come to the end of God's patience. And when we come to the end of his patience, we are in trouble. We are in deep trouble. Amen. As we see here, Belshazzar was, uh, was a... A man that did not think uh, use his mind, and we fall in that category so often. We have seen many things come about. We have seen many 
uh, a situation that had turned sour and wrong from doing wrong, from doing the wrong thing. But yet and still, we step in that same uh, uh, shoe. We step in that same issue. As we, uh, and Belshazzar went farther than his father, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar said that he, you know, felt that uh, everything that he had possessed, uh, he got it himself. And God, uh, you know, had to show him that, no, you didn't get this. I gave this to you. And as he did so, and how did he do so? By giving him the, uh, uh, removing his mind of understanding and having him to graze in the in that field and in the in the woods as an animal did. And he did it for some time until his mind came back to him. And <clears throat> And, and he then declared that there was no God besides God himself. Amen. But Nebu, uh, Belshazzar his, uh, saw this. He he, de he saw where his father had uh, went out and, and, and become an animal just almost. But, and, but yet and still, he didn't pay any attention to that. And so now he takes the cups that came from God's house, from Jerusalem. He takes the cups that was in God's house and gonna drink wine to, with them and, and, and celebrate but then he gonna give worship and honor and glory to inanimate objects and put them ahead of God using God's things God said you just done went too far and Daniel gave him the interpretation of his dream from the writing on the wall, from the hand that came on the wall. Uh, as you read this entire passage and a couple of chapters before and after, you find out that uh, uh, the hand on the uh, came on the wall and written on the wall as if you know it, 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 it was as a you know it was a it just unbelievable uh just a hand not a body not a person but a hand writing on the wall and the writing came up on the wall and then of course he wanted to know what it was what is this this you know being written on the wall and so they got daniel and daniel gave the interpretation and he told whoever well, did this he was going to give all this to him he was going to give him the chain of gold and the robe of purple which meant a lot in those days it was uh, a symbol of status okay and also gave him the uh the standing of being the third highest person in the kingdom i mean and we see here even though uh Belshazzar did not get a favorable interpretation. Daniel told him what the interpretation was. He did not get a favorable interpretation, but yet and still, this is one thing we give him that he did keep his word. He still, even after getting the interpretation, that he, you know, you done come short, real short, of doing what's right. You done went past the the, the uh, latitude of me allowing you to go on. And so you, your, your time is ended. That's it. And so, but yet and still, <clears throat> he, he told, he gave Daniel the things that he had promised, that he had uh, made, and he made the proclamation that he had promised that he would because he promised it to him. But he lasted not even throughout the night. That was his last day upon earth. Amen. <clears throat> Commentary says Belshazzar bade defiance to the judgment of God. Most historians consider that Cyrus then besieged Babylon. Security and sensuality are sad proofs of approaching ruin. That merit sinful indeed, which profanes scarred things. And what are many of the songs used at modern feasts better than the praises sung by the heathens to their gods? Daniel reads Belshazzar's doom. He had not taken warning by the judgments upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he had insulted God. Sinners are pleased with gods that neither see, nor hear, nor know, but they will be judged by one to whom all things are open, all things are known. Daniel reads the sinners written on the wall, 
all this may well be applied to the doom of every sinner at death the sinner's days are numbered and finished after death is the judgment when he will be weighed in the balance and found wanting and after judgment the sinner will be put be cut asunder and given as a prey to the devil and his angel while these things are passing in the palace it is considered that the army of cyrus entered the city and when belshazzar was slain a general submission followed soon will every impotent sinner find the writing of god's word brought to pass upon him whether he is weighed in the balance of the law as a self-righteous pharisee or in that of the gospel of as a painted hypocrite Amen. We don't want to fall in any of those states. We want to make sure that we don't fall in situations to where, you know, when God comes, he, 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 he's so uh, tired of what we are doing that he immediately, as they said, snuffs us out, gets rid of us, moves us out of the way. That is an awful place to be in. Amen. This is a great and wonderful lesson. I pray you meditate on this lesson and have a wonderful and blessed day.